Improvised explosive devices are the most widespread and destructive form of explosive used in the world. They have become the favored weapon of terrorists to indiscriminately kill and injure thousands of people each year. In 2015, Project Watchmaker was created in order to identify and upload profiles of known and suspected individuals involved in the manufacture of improvised explosive devices to a dedicated database. We could see that there was a gap in the law enforcement community that collated information, any intelligence, on persons that acquired a skill to make and provide explosive devices. So we formulated the idea to produce a database with this intention to collate information on individuals with this skill set. Over 40 countries every year are affected by improvised explosive devices. So it was essential that we set up the Watchmaker database as soon as possible. The Interpol notice system serves as a platform where tactical and technical information on IEDs may be shared, updated and modified by member countries. Intelligence and information is only good if you actively do something with it. We decided the best way was to operationalise the data, to run operation in member countries, to cross-reference the data held in the Watchmaker database with individuals travelling across international borders. Over the course of 19 days, the first ever Operation Watchmaker took place in three countries across Southeast Asia as part of coordinated efforts to exchange watch lists of suspected bomb makers. So we have now the local officers who are working with the list of those suspected and wanted bomb makers. The list that was provided by the uh, Interpol member countries during the Southeast Asia working group meetings. And uh, we are doing this beforehand, the arrival of the uh, passengers uh, in Sandakan, uh, in Malaysia, in order to have the advanced information on those individuals who will be traveling here. Over 35,000 passengers and 270,000 luggage, cargo and vehicles were checked. In addition, more than 6,500 fingerprints and facial images of travellers were collected during the operation for further checks against all other Interpol databases. As far as Sandakan Port is concerned, we are very concerned about the passengers coming into Sandakan using these ferries, likewise also going out and then back to the Philippines. Some of these people may come in without proper documents. So it is my role here as the head for Sindakan Port to ensure that uh, all these are documented, are checked through the, our CIQ. Because security, there should be no compromise. Five individuals were arrested at Sandakan Airport in Malaysia after more than 100 kilograms of methamphetamine were seized as a direct result of the operation due to the use of X-ray machines, which were not systematically used prior to the operation. Interpol's I-247 secure police communication system was connected at the Zamboanga seaport in the Philippines just weeks before the operation. I-247 allows for instant access to Interpol databases and law enforcement officials generated their first hit during the operation on a suspect travelling with a stolen passport. An operational coordination unit at the Interpol Global Complex for Innovation in Singapore acted as a central point of contact during the operation bringing together representatives from the three participating countries with the goal to support the overt and covert detection of bomb makers, thereby alerting countries to take appropriate legal action.